conference will be a dynamic forum for senior executives of leading telecom operators, enterprises and the government agencies to understand and formulate strategies to enhance the networks in line with business needs. Open RAN would definitely help Atmanirbhar Bharat movement and some companies have already started showing momentum in this regard. For telecom players, it lowers the capex and the opex, brings in more efficiency and innovative solutions with quicker deployment of 5G. For software makers, it is an opportunity to build Make in India solutions for the global. Mr. Narendra Rawat, Vice President, Technology India and South Asia Region, Mavenir. Mr. Saurabh Mittal, Head Network Infra Products, R&D, Bharti Airtel. Mr. Paul Miller, Chief Technology Officer, Wind River. Mr. Rajesh Singh, Executive Vice President, Radio and Strategy Planning, Vodafone Idea. Mr. Rajat Mukherjee, DG Broadband India Forum and Mr. Shashi Dharan, MD Bharat Exhibitions. And ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for the ceremonial inauguration of today's hybrid conference. Thank you, gentlemen, for doing the honours. I would now request the dignitaries to kindly take their seats on the stage. May I invite Mr. Ben Panic, Vice President, Telco Media and Entertainment Red Hat APAC, to kindly grace the stage with your presence, sir. Let's put our hands together to welcome. <laughs> May I invite Mr. Sham Mardikar, Group Chief Technology Officer, Mobility Reliance Geo. A very warm welcome to you, sir. May I invite Mr. Kunal Bajaj, CEO and co-founder of Cloud Extel. A warm welcome to you, sir. I invite Mr. Narendra Rawat, Vice President, Technology India and South Asia Region, Mevanir. A warm welcome to you, sir. I invite Mr. Saurabh Mittal, Head Network Infra Products, R&D, Bharti, HL. A very warm welcome to you, sir. I invite Mr. Paul Miller, Chief Technology Officer, Wind River, a warm welcome to you, sir. I invite Mr. Rajesh Singh, Executive Vice President, Radio and Strategy Planning, Vodafone Idea. A very warm welcome. Invite Mr. Rajat Mukherjee, Director General Broadband India Forum. A warm welcome to you, sir. And of course, we have with us on the stage Mr. Shashi Dharan, Managing Director, Bharat Exhibitions. And ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to request Mr. Rajat Mukherjee, Director General Broadband India Forum, to kindly begin the proceedings of this conference with his welcome address. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. May I request all of you to please take your seats, those who are standing behind. And those who are standing outside, please ask them to come inside. There's so many people standing outside. Uh, before uh, Rajat gives his welcome speech, I would like to congratulate the telecom fraternity under the cabinet, uh, Indian cabinet ministry. The entire cabinet has approved the 5G auction under the leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji. So a big uh, welcome and big <laughs> congratulations to all of you. I know Shami is getting and every operators are getting busy now how to auction for this, uh, participate in the auction. So. It's a big move in the Indian telecom industry where we will see 5G a reality. Now I request Rajat to give the welcome speech. A 
very warm welcome to everyone uh, and our honorable chief guest Sri K Rajaraman chairman of the digital communications commission and secretary telecommunications government of india uh, distinguished members of the industry on the dais my friend sashi dharan managing director of bharat exhibitions delegates from the government friends from the industry members of the media ladies and gentlemen uh, I am most privileged and very honored to be invited here today to deliver the welcome address at this second open RAN India 2022 hybrid conference with the theme Future of Radio Access Networks organized by Bharat Exhibitions with Broadband India Forum as the knowledge partner. Open RAN, also more popularly sometimes known as ORAN, is a term used for industry-wide standards for RAN, which is Radio Access Networks. The interfaces that support interoperability between equipment belonging to different vendors. And it helps to offer a higher degree of openness, flexibility, efficiency, and lower capex to the telecom operators and eventually lower the total cost of operation to benefit the end user. This is the age of breaking down of walled gardens and closed watertight networks designed, engineered, sourced and deployed by a single turnkey supplier or vendor. In the past, we used to have these very large public networks which were built and maintained by vendors like in the olden days Bell, Nortel, Siemens, Ericsson, Nokia. However, over a period of time and with the advent of it, we have seen the evolution of an open source, the open architecture and the breaking of this umbilical cord between the network owner and the single supplier or, or vendor. I'm reminded about a period years ago when devices first came into the market and they were launched with their own proprietary uh, OS. Nokia had Symbian. Um, Apple, of course, had its own OS, and Microsoft was trying to get into smartphones. Today, more than 85% of all the world's devices have Android, which is an open source. Similarly, these are the kind of impacts which are being seen here in the open RAN environment, which is the results in an open ecosystem, results in more innovation and more options for the operators. In an open RAN network architecture, it is third-party products that communicate with the main RAN vendor's infrastructure. But if I were to summarize the key benefits, they would be diversification, introduction of new innovation, reduction in the total cost of ownership, and the unlocking of new revenue opportunities in cellular op uh, network operators. But let me not necessarily bore you with those details. I'd like to stop here and let the more knowledgeable subject matter experts provide you with more detailed insights into this technology and its numerous benefits. In conclusion, let me just say this, that with this technology evolution of ORAN, this has come at a time when we can begin our 5G journey. Given the fact that 5G requires intense densification, a technology breakthrough like ORAN could play an instrumental part in ensuring its successful use in India. I look forward to the upcoming deliberations during the entire course of the conference today, enhancing my own understanding and knowledge about the subject through them, and I wish this event every success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for those warm words of welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, our honorable chief guest for today, Shri K. Rajaraman, IES, Chairman DCC and Secretary Telecom, Department of Telecommunications, Government of India, is present with us on the virtual mode. And we welcome him warmly. Let's put our hands together to welcome him. A very warm welcome to you, sir. And may I hand over to you, sir, for your address? Over to you. Uh, I'm uh, honored to be part of 
this uh, event to deliver a keynote address on this Oran event and thank the organizers, the Broadband India Forum and Bharat Exhibitions for, this, uh, uh, for organizing a very timely conference. Uh, as global networks are gradually heading towards uh, expanding 5G services, Government of India has also announced yesterday the 5G spectrum options and uh, uh, rollout is expected sometime in, in August of this year. This promises to be a big step forward in creating a strong foundation for the growth of India's digital economy and Industry 4.0 revolution. With some programs like Startup India and Make in India spearheaded by the Honorable Prime Minister, we expect big economic gains for 5G in terms of innovation and uh, um, driving the uh, use of these digital economy tools to, uh, to grow the uh, various sectors. Uh, incidentally, 5G uh, promises to be uh, the first time where, uh, where every sector has, uh, has, uh, has the opportunity to use it to actually drive uh, uh, new services, new products, uh, new experience for customers and, and for the um, uh, industry players as well. For all this to happen, innovation must be enabled and supported. Networks will have to evolve and transform to meet this increasing demands and expectations. From closed and proprietary legacy networks, uh, net, uh, network design and architecture is evolving and transcending towards uh, open radio access network. The concept of ORAN is used for more open radio access network architecture than provided today by Telcos in their existing network. ORAN is a term used by the industry-wide standards for uh, RAN in the interfaces that support interoperability between vendors, equipment and offer network flexibility at a lower cost. The main purpose of open OAN is to have an interoperability standard for RAN hardware and software which can be purchased from different vendors. This will enable network operators avoid, avoiding getting um, stuck with a proprietary architecture and, and uh, uh, leading to perhaps higher costs and lack of flexibility. This is likely to, therefore, this movement is therefore likely to promote greater flexibility for operators as well as for consumers as well as for uh, designers and manufacturers higher efficiencies I mean, and thereby leading to reduction in the cost of network element and uh, enabling better consumer services. The advantages of open RAN are manifold. An open RAN environment means an expanded ecosystem with more vendors providing the building block. It is expected to usher in more innovation and more options for the operator. These, they can also add new services, new designs and serve new kinds of customers. Some of the other benefits include more market competition and increase in customer choice, low per equipment costs and improved network performance. In an open RAN environment architecture, third party products can communicate to the main open RAN vendors infrastructure. Network op uh, operators can also opt for less expensive third party op products that operate on generic and not proprietary hardware. As network operators look to transition to ORAN architecture for 5G using open RAN interfaces, they can hope to reduce cost of deployment in this highly competitive market. In India, I am happy to note that many startups and industry players have already taken the challenge head on and have commenced work on ORAN. VV, VNK Labs, and many others have developed components, which includes the radio unit, TU, CU, etc. CDOT have form, has formed, uh, CDOT is our uh, premier research, uh, telecom research institution. It has formed an ORAN consortium and is working towards developing an ORAN testbed. It has also signed up MOUs in four different formats, and we hope that. Uh, uh, more Indian domestic companies will be able to come on board this or India Orion Alliance to develop uh, India specific Orion stacks over the next year or so. There are many groups spearheading Orion mission globally. The Orion Alliance is leading the charge with its mission to reshape the RAN industry towards a more intelligent, open, and fully interoperable mobile network. By supporting open specification standards, Orion Alliance hopes to create a more competitive marketplace for 5G radio technology that drives more innovation while driving down prices, much like what GSM did for the radio system. ORAN specifications will enable a more competitive and vibrant RAN supplier ecosystem with faster innovation to improve user experience. ORAN based mobile networks will improve the efficiency of RAN deployments as well as the operations of mobile operators. I am happy to note that telecom service providers like Bharti Airtel, Jio, as well as uh, academic and research since like Amrita, etc., are all part of such international alliances. I hope that uh, this will lead to greater traction in terms of developing India's own uh, ORAN stack. If one were to summarize the key benefits of ORAN, they would be diversification of the supplier ecosystem, introduction of new innovation models, reduced total cost of ownership, and helps unlock 
new revenue opportunities in cellular networks through the process of shared neutral costing. The market for ORAN, which disaggregates the RAN portion of the mobile network, thus traditionally has been a subject to inflexible single vendor approach, is expected to surge over the next six years. A research company has predicted that 85% of the compound annual growth rate during the period putting, uh, has put the ex uh, expected market value at $22 billion by 2028. In conclusion, I would like to say that this technology evolution of ORAN could not have come at a more opportune time as we are about to begin our 5G journey. Given the fact that 5G requires extreme densification, a technology breakthrough like ORAN is extremely welcome as it incre helps increase the increase net uh, increase network efficiencies, increase flexibility and reduce cost. I urge and hope all the network operators, both the public and private network, will adopt this technology, making 5G services fast, competitive and uh, innovative. Thank you and Jay. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for that informative and overall address. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the proud privilege in inviting for the operator keynote address, our distinguished and eminent speaker, Mr. Sham Mardikar, Group Chief Technology Officer, Mobility Reliance, GEO. Let's put our hands together to welcome him. Over to you, sir. Morning, uh, respected chief guest, uh, friends on dais, and all present here. I think it's it's great to be back on on this mix of of real virtual thing. I think one of those conferences after two years when you actually have to fully dress for the conference. <laughs> Otherwise, it's been uh, wherever you are. Can we switch on the presentation, please? So what I want to do is, uh, and we have many experts here and uh, speakers here, what I want to do over the next 10-12 uh, minutes is just to take you through a uh, couple of concepts, seed couple of thoughts into your head so that um, we understand where we are going with this huge disruption around this whole open RAN technology architecture and how this is going to uh, change the way we operate, not only uh, as an operator or as a partner, but the overall industry uh, ecosystem and what are those two, three, four fundamental driving forces which are going to change the way uh, this is uh, going to usher in and finally the challenges uh, which we need to be aware of because uh, if you look at the way telecom has exploded specifically in this country, uh, we started with voice in the, in the first decade of the century then we started with data in the second decade 3G and 4G blossomed. We are now one of the biggest uh, data consuming uh, geographies in the world, uh, highest per capita consumption, highest total consumption barring uh, China of course which we believe we will be able to overtake very soon and this is just on 4G so you can imagine if, uh, if 5G and Shashi has this knack of uh, timing these uh, conferences just the day after TNIA was released so I think it is uh, very well uh, captured there. So uh, uh, let, let, let me start from there. Uh, next, do I have a clicker or something here? So if you look at Open RAN, I think one of the first things which we need to realize is people are not looking at it in a uniform manner. Thank you. Uh, everybody has his own or her own view of what Open RAN is. I mean, people are looking at cost efficiencies, people are looking at driving intelligence into the system, people are looking at disaggregation, breaking the hardware and the software paradigm, creating new management practices and uh, uh, most of them at this point of time as the technology evolves, architecture evolves, um, deployments evolve most importantly, uh, they actually then get converged on what exactly is open RAN. So we know it is RAN, we know it is open, but how does it actually kind of culminate into something which is different than the radio access network of yesteryears and just in addition to being different, what is the actual value add it, 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 it gives through. So that's, that's something which uh, I wanted to start with. And if you look at what is changing in the industry and I keep on harping upon these three specific attributes which I call as the holy trinity of communication. Erstwhile communication dependent on connectivity. But ever since internet has broken loose and, and the digital revolution has happened with devices being intelligent, with applications being intelligent, there are two more fundamental entities which are now becoming the bedrock of this whole communication ecosystem. And this trinity is, of course it starts with connectivity which is now hyper, which is now extremely dense, which is now closer to the customer. But then it is also aided with two more important erstwhile IT-centric capability now getting 
totally, totally embedded in telecom called compute and storage. So moving from connectivity only communication system to, a, to an ecosystem which is a triangulation of connectivity, compute and storage is where we are going. And the moment we realize that, we understand that this will actually make two or three very fundamental changes in the way networks will get operated upon. You will be able to actually place the compute ecosystem and the storage ecosystem in a coexistent way on connectivity itself. So you don't need to have a far away. So cloud started it. But when cloud started it, there was cloud and then there was connectivity. There were two fundamental paradigms at that point of time that you have your compute and your storage in the cloud and then that cloud connects you to some kind of window which, which enables you to access whatever the compute and, and storage capability has. Now that cloud itself is getting desegregated and part and parcel and portions of those particular cloud elements are now getting embedded on the connectivity. So the radio will have its own share of uh, compute and storage. The mobile edge data centers will have their own and this distribution will, will, will drive the next paradigm of experience. The paradigm around latency, the paradigm about hyperspeed, the paradigm about quality of network, all of that now is getting broken up into these three. And this will drive what we call the networks as the programmable network because connectivity was just a bare pipe. Now if you add compute and storage, then now you are able to control the way the network delivers to the device, the way the network delivers to human being, the way the network delivers to enterprise. So people, enterprise and devices, all the three consumers of, of this ecosystem will now get benefited by having compute and storage exactly on top of connectivity. And this disruption is radical and this disruption is what this decade will take us through going forward. Open RAN is just one of the most important um, uh, concepts of this. So if you look at what are those four or five technology drivers which are actually uh, driving this and why did it happen now and why logically it didn't happen maybe with 4G or maybe a couple of years ago or, or, or last decade. Desegregation I've been speaking of. See, there is a slight difference between the word desegregation and the word virtualization. We have been, and, and IT folks and, 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 and most of you as I know, we've been working on virtualization projects since decades, more from an IT centric perspective. And virtualization was just kind of using COTS hardware and putting applications on top of it. But disaggregation goes one step further. Disaggregation actually breaks those capability into functional modules. And then you are now able to populate those functional module depending on the relevance of that module on the geography where it operates, for the customer it operates for, or for the service it is operating. And that is very, very powerful because if you are then able to create a functional module which delivers what it wants to deliver for a specific service, you can optimize it, performance uh, uh, enhance it for just that particular service. And then it does not need to have any downstream or upstream dependencies going forward. That's disaggregation for you. Open interfaces. The, the moment you disaggregate, the biggest thing you require is how do you connect those disaggregated modules. And if, unless you have a very open, standard, simple way of interconnecting them, you will actually have these islands of disaggregated intelligence and capability not talking to each other. To, to make that work from disaggregation, the open interfaces come. And these open interfaces then can, and, and, and Secretary mentioned a while back that we are talking about a module from an entity A and a module from an entity B totally coming down to create one particular service but they won't talk and they won't deliver this service if, the, if they are not connected to each other on a, on a standard and an open interface. So open interface is the second big value proposition which this whole open ecosystem brings. Third is conventional virtualization. How do you pool the resources? So you have X compute, Y storage. Can you use that to distribute and, and, and virtualize and service multiple modules wherever you can pool those resources? This drives uh, a different level of cost and resource efficiency, if I may, on, on, on the system. So that goes after your disaggregation and, 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 and connectivity happens. And then comes the most important part of it, driving intelligence into the system. And this programmable intelligence coming from AI, coming from ML, this is going to power the engine which is distributed which is disaggregated, still connected in a very, very seamless manner, still connected in a very open manner so that entities can talk to each other, entities can elastically manage themselves going forward. 
and, and uh, not only manage themselves, self-heal, performance manage, service manage, adapt to traffic, adapt to customer need, adapt to devices, all of that will come from this layer where AI ML is not only capturing what is happening on that particular module, but intelligently analyzing it and then delivering the best possible outcome. And the last but not the least, and Rajat very briefly alluded to it in his, in his welcome, is about this hyperdensification post 5G. We need to get closer to the customer. The customer could be a device, customer could be an enterprise location, customer could be a machine itself. It could be a car or it could be a washing machine or whatever it is. How do you make sure that the, there is a deployment model which is modular enough, cost effective enough so that this distribution and all of us in, in, in our past lives over past decades, we have actually created telecom networks and you know the capex intensive nature of this industry. It is not only about the cost of spectrum, it is about cost of data centers, cost of optical fiber, the kind of power and energy we spend on each, on powering up each one of these uh, uh, components. I mean that is humongous capex. Now if that capex has to be multiplied 10 times over for a densification 10 times over, it will fall on its own under its own weight. So there has to be a better and a modular way to deploy it. And this is the other thing which this open uh, uh, architecture gives us, that you don't need to carry the whole jing bang to the last bang. Break it up into very smart, break it up into very uh, delivery centric modules, cost effective modules, energy effective modules. Energy is big, carbon footprint perspective also and from cost of consumption also. Energy infrastructure uh, 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 optimized modules. How do you get all of these together? and then drive this and this is going to usher in the, that, that era of, 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 of programmability and now if you relate, I hope I can get back using this. Yes, so if you, if you, if you look at the linking of, of this hyper connectivity versus hyper compute versus hyper storage to these five paradigms, then we realize how was this breakup in a very smart intelligent manner actually going to uh, 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 kind of usher in the, the capability. Now, what is stopping us? Why are we not going to convert this? Why are we not able to convert this tomorrow? What is holding us back? First and foremost, the moment you have more than one moving part, you need somebody else to come and stitch it together. The so-called conventional system integration issue. Now, system integration and again, I think since we have this historical precedence of, of integrating huge data centers and, 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 and such like capabilities, what is different with this kind of integration? This kind of integration is different because it actually goes at least two technical layers below conventional integration. You are talking about integration of software and hardware and you are talking about integration of the management layer which will performance optimize it. And that could not be done unless you have a very, very specific insight on the domain which you are integrating and on the capabilities which you are integrating. We, so the, the industry is coming together, there are capabilities being built, there are centers for excellence getting built. But I think first and foremost is this deployment, the simpler the, the outcome gets, the more complicated the underlying deployment gets. And here if we have the right set of machinery, man and machine to kind of drive these uh, integration, I think this will become the first uh, uh, pillar of the success of, of, of something like ORA. Second, and, and, and those who, who, who are familiar with radio engineering and RF engineering, one of the most important tenets of a successful radio engineering is what we call as optimization. I mean radio is nothing without optimization. And all of us who have grown up as, 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 as RF engineers, the only thing which we have been told is just radiating does not help it. You will have to optimize it, optimize it, optimize it, otherwise it's, it's, it's just noise to the, to the device. And this optimization has been happening on a monolithic radio so far. And that is why I am trying to highlight this point. Now optimizing a monolithic radio which has everything integrated, the hardware integrated, the baseband integrated, the CPRI integrated, you just need to have one part, the scheduler integrated on the software level. So 80% of it from that perspective is pre-integrated, you are just trying to optimize it for uh, what it radiates. Now if you break this, these four capabilities out, scheduler is coming from some uh, other entity. The physical layer is coming from some other entity. Physically, they are both, both, both different. Interconnect is behaving from a uh, is in, in a different manner. Now, how do you now inculcate these capabilities into optimization? So performance managing and then the, the, the conventional finger pointing happens. 
my unit is working fine it is hardware that is failing hardware is perfect there is a problem with the software yeah there is there is some interference coming in the interconnect and hence hence the signar is bad any any of these things could happen and we have heard all of this even in our current ecosystem now imagine when 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 this gets broken what kind of uh, chaos if not managed properly it is created so performance is is one of the biggest so who will integrate it and who will performance manage it i think that will get it closer to the deployment and then the most important part which we've been highlighting for now years around specifically in the indian context for the for for, for telecom as an industry we are talking about infrastructure readiness if you are talking about physically distributed modules if you are talking about uh, geographically disparate capabilities how do you connect them with a reliable infrastructure is power reliable is fiber reliable because now one blip in any part of the infrastructure can actually have a, a, a cascading impact on, 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 on the systems which are underlying dependent on that infrastructure. So you create a BBU cloud somewhere and that BBU cloud gets isolated. You are suddenly losing connectivity to every G node B and E node B that is connected to that BBU cloud. That is infrastructure. If there is a power outage, if there is a connectivity outage and we are all uh, and, and again kudos to, to, to all of us together as an industry because I was, I was talking to somebody last week uh, in, a, in, a, in a discussion about power and energy and it is, it is a very proud feeling to tell them that the availability of our network to our customer is significantly ahead of what the conventional electricity supply availability to their customers is. We have power outages in our houses, in our homes, long outages in, 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 in parts of rural India, in, in other states and all of that. But, but the mobile phone works. So there is something that is powering the site in spite of the electricity not available to it. So we've done wonders around creating uh, alternate sources, solar, diesel generators and, 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 and such like. But unless this infrastructure which is the bedrock to carry this is kind of stable, is kind of um, uh, seamless, this, this will not be a, a success. So, and, and this also highlights the other big point on, on, on uh, the infrastructure portion. There is a very sweet spot of coupling between the technology and the architecture. An architecture is more akin to the topology here in this scenario. If the topology is not supporting that technology, the technology will be by itself without any, any, any foot on the ground to, to uh, justify itself. And this is exactly what the infrastructure backdrop gives us, that unless I have seamless 100% connectivity, 100% energy availability, putting one module here and second module here is definitely not going to function. It will be costly, it will be interrupted, it will be, uh, the, the service will be bad, short. The other, other big thing is, is, is cost and, and, and I have actually flipped this famous statement, I think Aristotle made this statement that, that whole is always more than some of the parts. That was Aristotle. But in this scenario, at the beginning, some of parts is definitely more than whole. If I create a monolithic system today, a conventional RAND today, it is definitely going to cost me cheaper than taking five different components and trying to integrate if you look at the total cost of ownership. TCO has been, and, and, and we will have uh, good discussions during the day, TCO has been one of the biggest selling points for, for Open RAN, but we still have to actually cross that bridge before it actually flips in the uh, uh, commercially in, in, in favor of ORAN. And that will, it, it is not that it's not going to come, but it is, it is going to come when, when, when economies of scale are realized, when seamlessness of technology is realized, when energy efficiencies are, are realized, when uh, uh, our ability to integrate it seamlessly uh, is realized. Today the cost of service itself in creating an ORAN, item number one, system integration, itself will by far exceed uh, a lot of cost items in the conventional run. So how do we break this cost paradigm? This is the, the, the fourth challenge. And last challenge again, like any, anything with multiple moving part, the weakest link in the chain is the hindrance for evolution and growth. You can get the best of the radios, but if the interfaces, the APIs are not ready, you can get best of the APIs, but if physical layer is not performing, you can get all of these best, but if your virtualization engine or disaggregation engine or orchestrator is not functioning, that will pull the whole performance down. So here again, I mean, unlike the, the customer side performance, the technology side performance will be limited by the weakest link. Now, how do we drive that? How do we make sure that we are in step 
the the cloud is in step with hardware the the cloud is in step with the hypervisor the hypervisor is in step with the network function network function is in step with the orchestration one of them kind of blips and 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 you gone there so these are very real and 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 none of these challenges is 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 anything which we cannot overcome but if we are aware of this as an industry together we pick up each one by one we align ourselves to one fundamental outcome that we will be able to create a network which is programmable we will be able to create a network which is scalable and densifiable we will be able to create a network which is cost effective i think this is going to add tremendous tremendous value uh, in the mobile networks of the future so in in my last chart in the in the light of programmable network the jedi call of may the source be with you thank you so much Thank you very much indeed sir for that very interesting and informative keynote presentation and now ladies and gentlemen for the next keynote address i have the privilege in inviting our eminent speaker mr ben panic who is the vice president telco media and entertainment red hat apac over to you sir for the keynote address Thank you. Well, it's a privilege and a pleasure to be here today. I'm really excited finally to be able to spend time face to face with all of you. Uh, I think the timing is impeccable, you know, with the, the announcement yesterday of the forthcoming 5G spectrum auctions. We couldn't have timed this event any better. And I must say I'm really excited about what is upon us in terms of 5G edge and open RAN. For me personally as I look back over the last 25 years I can't think of a time where I'm more excited about the opportunity for all of us as an industry. So the power of open it's an exciting time for India. Not only are we on the precipice of the start of the 5G deployments with the Spectrum auction, we're also able to leverage made in India. For software startups there are abundant opportunities from oran to the countless edge use cases that will be developed to help us monetize the network the open nature of 5g networks lends itself to the hyper competition that we all need to see in the industry on a global scale it's going to enable our industry to monetize 5g and ensure that and it, that we build a network that we can monetize and that others can't necessarily capitalize on We believe open source is the catalyst for innovation. It enables flexibility and choice. The intersection of the open source community and the open source environment that is stable, secure and reliable is Red Hat. We place a priority on our partner ecosystem. It's what provides the operators with choice, flexibility and the opportunity to innovate. And it's that choice that's going to enable new revenue streams. and open the oran world up. So today I'd like to share a little bit more about how we see oran developing and the opportunity for India. So people are the single most important part of everything we do today and into the future. We see that just this morning being able to communicate face to face. I hosted a webinar last week by STL Research across the APAC region. and we did research that included india and many countries and the message was clear we need to develop our people we need to reshape our programs to harness the opportunity in the cloud centric world as we develop our 5g networks we need to deploy new platforms we need to become more cloud centric and the technology changes the decisions that we make today and in the coming months will drive our network for the future and we must focus on our people our culture and our business processes the scale that we're going to drive with 5G and open ran is going to dwarf what is there in today's macro networks so i like to ask the question you know who owns the platform of tomorrow in the 5G network where does the skill set lie is it a new team is it a current team or is it a team that we need to retrain wrapping all of this together is a need to now rely and drive on mass automation at scale when we deploy and deliver oran we're going to do it on a scale that's an order of magnitude larger than today it's going to dwarf the macro networks of the 3g and the 4g world and we're going to need things like ai ops to help us drive that to a reality so when we look at open ran we see three pillars 
that tie everything together. Network transformation and evolution, and we've been undertaking this for years. If I think back to NFV, you know, we've been driving this virtualization change. Now we move towards the containerization of applications and the cloudification of that network. So we know that cost is an important factor, especially here in India, and I think we all rise each day thinking about how can we lower the cost? How can we drive a better cost model and a TCO in our networks? Ultimately though, and this is where I get the most excited, I believe that the change is going to come from driving new revenues, from network slicing to private 5G and the edge use cases that will be enabled via the 5G network. These are going to deliver net new revenue streams. And this has been sadly lacking for us in the industry. So wrapping all of this up is the need for us to consider how do we plan for automation on a scale that we have not considered before? With that site count increasing by an order of magnitude to provide the dense 5G coverage that we're going to need, we need to factor in automation programs and we need to live and breathe automation at scale. As an industry, we see that Open RAN is gaining support. Over two thirds of operators surveyed believe that it's an important strategic priority and we see this accelerating. The opportunity to leverage Open RAN globally increases as operators look to disaggregate their networks. Leveraging on their work in NFV over the past five to seven years, we see that acceleration of the multi-vendor network from hardware through to software, providing operators with the flexibility and choice to adopt new internal workloads on a common cloud and also to service industry 4.0. So as we look into the ORAN market, what we can see that that technology is already being adopted. We see that here today. By the time we get halfway through the current decade, the industry will be spending over $7 billion. And as we move through 2023, we see a sharp increase in spending as we move through that proof of concept and testing phase and begin to roll out production and mass deployment. So I believe that we should also use the time ahead of us to consider how we deploy these new technologies. In a world that is becoming more cloud-centric, we should look to adopt new practices as we move through traditional proof of concepts. We should ask ourselves the question, how can we get more efficient in proof of concepts? How do we move out of that legacy world and how do we drive the adoption of new technology faster than we did previously as an industry? So the benefits of ORAN are transformative and the operational efficiency that comes from a common platform is definitely going to change the way we deploy and operate the networks. That disaggregation reduces the cost of building the RAN. We're going to have to drive to that. It's going to need scale for us to achieve that, but we're on our way. And our work on a common platform from core to edge so that we can improve that operational efficiency and not having to run multiple platforms and again, let's think about this in the same way that the cloud providers do, right? Build a single platform and leverage off that. As we consider the decisions that we make in the network from core to edge, it's those decisions that become critical today. The hardware choices for the edge are constrained by power, real estate, capacity and cooling. The right platform decisions that we make now affect our ability to deploy and develop those multi-vendor environments and thus monetize our networks into the future. Being open matters. We learned from that DIY era in OpenStack. You know, it was not as easy as some would have wished. I often ask people to ensure that they focus on their core talents. Focus on your core business. Don't try to be everything to everyone. Focus and deliver on what you do best. So at Red Hat, we believe that platform decision needs to serve all of your workloads, both internally focused and externally focused. Our history as a company is built on being open. Our OpenShift platform today serves many thousands of enterprise and telecommunications customers. And we've been at this for years, contributing to the community, leading the way and in providing inputs from you as an industry back to that community to share the open source product. And it's part of our DNA. From core to edge, large clusters, to single node OpenShift architecture, we've been influencing the design and deployment in the community 
for your benefit. So as we cloudify the network, the IT infrastructure, as we collapse multiple platforms into one, we are very aware that we need to provide a flexible platform for you to adopt. From on-premise to public cloud, OpenShift spans each design requirement to serve you and provide you with the flexibility that you need. So as an industry, and this is where I think it's a, a powerful part for us. You know, we're leading the world in edge solutions. Telco and the 5G macro world really drives the first at scale deployment of edge around 5G. It underpins where we'll go in terms of new industrial use cases that deliver those new revenue streams. Adjacent to ORAN and really leading the infrastructure and the common platform that the industry will deploy our industry 4.0 use cases. It's these new ideas that will be generated that will drive new net new revenue streams that add to our bottom line. And I think those net new revenue streams are really the catalyst for us to monetize that investment that's going to be made in the network from core to edge through to the spectrum. When we look at why CSPs are investing in ORAN, a number of things jump out. Cost is not the biggest factor. And this resonates with me, you know, if you think back to NFV, it all started out with it's going to lower the costs and that shift really moved to drive choice, flexibility and efficiency. You know, secondly, increasing flexibility in solutions and new service revenue, they basically tied for second and third here. Having to take time to the market and not only in ORAN but also in industry 4.0 use cases, you know, choice in your partners is a critical decision criteria. It's going to affect what you could do in the future. And at the top, we see faster control of feature development in ORAN is the number one reason that operators are exploring that technology. Not being locked in to a legacy solution, having an opportunity to influence roadmaps and features is critical as CSPs look to take their 5G network you know, deep into that network for the delight of their customers. So at Red Hat, the, the ecosystem is really important. You know, we see that need for choice, feature input, and a flexible solution as a critical part to your business. For decades, we have worked closely with our partners across all of our open source technologies to ensure that you, the customer, have the access to build the technology and solutions you need to differentiate your business and take new market offers. As we move towards ORAN, we see that our partner ecosystem for radio certainly becomes more diverse. Traditional NEPs have been joined by ISVs and new software-centric companies born in the cloud era, some here in India. All are able to provide solutions for your business needs. And I think those SIs and the global SIs become very critical as we look for someone to be able to deliver that end-to-end -end solution for us as an industry. So as I close and I circle back to the three major themes to, to, for today, people matter. We need to think carefully about that culture and talent, how we develop that and how we best align to the changing and evolving requirements of the digital service provider. As we have seen from the industry research, flexibility matters. Without it, we find it hard to innovate and differentiate. And finally, that diverse ecosystem of partners is really needed to provide the digital service provider with choice when it comes to their partner selection. So thank you for your time today. I'm more excited about the opportunity in front of us than any time in the last 25 years. ORAN's going to drive the evolution of our networks and it opens up core to edge and choices for us as an industry. Let's leverage the power of open. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for that keynote address. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before we move into the panel discussion session, I would request Mr. Shashidharan to kindly do the honors of presenting a small token of gratitude and appreciation to our eminent speaker, Mr. Sham Mardikar. Mr. Mardikar has to take leave for another appointment. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for sparing your time and being here with us and for that wonderful keynote presentation. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, we now move ahead with the panel discussion session for the inaugural session. And 
I now have the proud privilege in introducing our uh, eminent panelists of this session. Our distinguished moderator for this session is Mr. Kunal Bajaj. He's CEO and co-founder Cloud Extel, has 22 plus years of experience in the telecom, internet, and the tele technology space. His past experiences have been, uh, he has been the partner and director India at Analysis Mason, founder of the company, acquired by AM, advisor at Tri, director on the board of 197 and Paytm, previously worked at McKinsey and Company of New York, Geo 3X startup, and he has education of University of Pennsylvania, Wharton and Engineering Schools, graduated honors with bachelor's in computer science, master's in telecommunications, and networking management and finance bachelor's. And amongst the eminent panelists, we have with us Mr. Rajesh Singh, who is Executive Vice President, Radio and Strategy Planning, Vodafone Idea. Mr. Ben Panic, Vice President, Telco Media and Entertainment, Red Hat APAC. Mr. Narendra Rawat, Vice President, Technology, India and South Asia Region, Mevanir. Mr. Saurabh Mittal, Head Network, Infra Products, R&D, Bharti Airtel. And joining us on the panel in the virtual mode uh, is our eminent panelist, Mr. Paul Miller, Chief Technology Officer, Wind River. A uh, very warm welcome to Mr. Paul Miller on the virtual mode. Can we also have him on the screen, please? And ladies and gentlemen, the time duration for this panel discussion is approximately 35 to 40 minutes. With those words, I hand over to Mr. Kunal Bajaj to kindly carry forward the proceedings of the panel discussion. Over to you, sir. Hi, good morning everyone. So um, uh, I have to, uh, as, as customary, but, but uh, definitely felt from the heart thanks Shashiji for organizing this. Uh, at least for me, I don't know if for everyone else, this is the first uh, in-person or, or hybrid event uh, in a very long time. And it's great to see so many old friends and colleagues and have uh, a great panel of dignitaries here. Um, also great to be back in uh, Delhi after a long time as well. Um, I think there's a lot that we can learn from this upcoming panel. We've had some uh, great presentations so far from, uh, from Sham, uh, as well as from, um, from Ben, and there's a lot of information that they've shared with us. And I think what we'd like to do over the next 30 or 40 minutes is basically try and understand from both the operator perspective as well as the uh, vendor perspective, how does this all really boil down to what we can expect to see in India in the coming few years. Um, now we've had the announcement of the 5G auctions, uh, and I think everyone's quite excited about that. The process has started. So it's now just a matter of time before all of these things start getting rolled out. And I think uh, we all believe up here that Open RAN is going to play a very significant role in how the future of um, networks, technology, are, are really going to get rolled out, especially in the 5G world. So. Um, to kick off, uh, maybe what we can do is, um, uh, you know, Ben, since you've just given your keynote, I'm going to skip over you for now and, and start with some of the other panelists. Uh, I know that we've got Paul online as well. Paul, are you able to hear us properly? Yes, I can. Hopefully you can hear me well. Yes, absolutely. Great. So just be coming to you for, for a question shortly as well. Um, why don't we start with uh, Saurabh, um, if, if you would like, if you have the microphone in front of you. Um, you know, as an operator, finally, you, you've heard different perspectives of uh, what Sham had to say and what, what, uh, you know, what we heard from Ben as well. Um, what do you, you know, as you think about designing the future of Open RAN and 5G for Airtel, what do you really think is going to be the key benefit that we're going to see uh, for Open RAN getting included into the network ecosystem for uh, operators in India and for the environment in India? Thanks, Kunal, uh, and thanks to Shashi and Bharat Exhibitions for this uh, organizing this event. Uh, my take, right? I mean, Kunal 
So let me use an acronym, uh, I mean, to probably give my perspective on the open plan. And the acronym is actually India, I-N-D-I. -I. So I, in this, stands for innovation and intelligence. The N over here is the new operating model, right? The opportunities which come from the new operating model, I mean, whether in terms of deployment, whether in terms of how we build the networks. And why is that? It is from the next, which is D, because it is disaggregated. And the next one, I would say, the next I over here is the indigenous, right? I think there's a lot of discussion on the make in India, I mean, Atman uh, So I think I probably will bucketize the tech set of opportunities in that I. And the last is the A. A stands for automation, ag agility, and adaptability, right? So to me, Open RAN, I think, could be really summarized in what India stands for. And hence, let me put that way that the opportunities that we see from an Indian context, we can probably divide this into the, I mean, supply and demand perspective. Let me first start with the demand, right? I mean, we have this huge task of building the 5G networks in a much relatively shorter period of time, right? I mean, we have taken decades to build the 2G, 3G, 4G networks, but that's not the time scale we definitely will be looking at, right? So I think. India presents a huge and humongous opportunity from that perspective. And if you go to the supply side, I mean, I think all of us uh, are very, I would say, uh, aware of the fact that there is a very large Indian talent, which is not just in India, but if you look at the Indian diaspora across the world, Indian companies who are driving this innovation. So I would say on the supply side, there is a great opportunity and which is towards the, I mean, Prime Minister Modi's vision of Atman Nirbhar, Make in India. I think, so that's the that's a opportunity which is coming from that perspective. And last but not the least, right, of course, when you have more innovation and intelligence, right, I mean, how do we drive the overall productivity of the network, right? I think that's something which is key. Uh, and as operators, I think we are saying that we have to lead this innovation co-create this with our partners and take benefit of this, right? It's not an easy journey, but I think that's the journey that we have to do together. Thank you. Great, great. Thank you so much, Saurabh. Um, why don't we go to your neighbor? Uh, so, so Rajesh, uh, you know, as you think about specifically what VIL is going to be doing, um, do you share some of the thoughts with Saurabh? Do you guys have a slightly different perspective on what you will be focusing on? Hello, I'm Arul. A very good morning to all. And thank you for the wishes for giving this opportunity. Yeah, I echo what Saurav has said. I think uh, we all know the open run conceptually and architecturally, it's pretty good. I'd say its concept is very good. It brings a lot of innovations. It's disaggregating uh, hardware, software, it becoming hardware agnostic. And most importantly, the vendor ecosystem, which is shrinking a little bit because we see that in 5G market, some of the vendors is restricted in the market. So now it's going to be shrink. So it's giving a lot of opportunity to evolve the vendor ecosystem. So we have the opportunity to expand beyond the few uh, NEPs which is currently in the market. But at the same time, the, it has to be seen as, I think Shyam was highlighting, uh, that uh, all this innovation and uh, disaggregations and open source interface and all, it's architectural and theoretically it seems very good and, and it will really bring a uh, lot of new things, a lot of uh, new services as API will get open. It has uh, a new <coughs> architecture element, a RIC, it's called RAN Intelligen Controller, yes. which is immense, uh, you know, optimization capabilities and offering differential services uh, to consumers. So that way it will be pretty good. But the, we have the same time because there's challenges around this. Uh, what is happening uh, as this multiple integrations and the new element, the uh, uh, complexity is getting also added. And this complexity is where we're talking about even system integrated coming in. And who has to bring this all together and the best of breed what we're talking about and to give the finally the best performance. At the same time, the head messaging of the open RAN was that, you know, we'll, we'll bring the TCOs will lower down. And especially in the Indian market where ARPU is very low, data consumption is very high, we have to see that how the cost 
uh, TCO can be bring down and it's not only the capex, even the opex and even the energy consumptions, all those has to be seen. There is a lot of rooms to travel there. Uh, I think we are doing the lot of trials with the open RAN vendors and trying to see that how best and how we can accelerate this kind of uh, what is the industry demand is so that it can be really deployed. And it has to give the same performance, same robustness, same resiliency, uh, you know, uh, as what the proprietary or uh, classical vendors already has provided. We see there is a gap at, in, the, uh, in the features, parity and giving the same performance. Though yes, I think going forward being open source, innovation bringing in and API and a lot of software developers are getting opened up. So new and new uh, features and will get evolved. Uh, if you see the 5G, uh, it's again uh, depend on what kind of architecture we evolving. So no doubt uh, the incumbent and being the good 4G networks, uh, there is a prob high probability that all will start with the NSA. And when we are starting with the NSA, it's a 4G going to be anchor network uh, with the 5G. So open and also has to extend it towards 4G, not only the 5G. That's only then will make more successful in the market. And uh, Infrastructure's perspective, uh, I think it's very important as we have distributed the CU, DU, radios and all together, but uh, finally it has to be all connected and has to be comment, uh, connected with the right latencies, right back hall, front hall, mid hall and front hall. So the fiber infrastructure is going to be very important. I think uh, the tower fiberizations and all those also has to come. So this all ecosystem, either infrastructures, fiber, uh, your uh, NSA architecture, ORAN in 4G, more innovations, robustness, resiliency, all has to come. Uh, I mean, uh, it needs to be accelerated rather so that it can be because 5G is going to be there, right, very soon. So, so it can be really deployed and right uh, consumer services can be delivered. Thank you. Great, great. No, thank you. Thank you so much, Rajesh. So, um, uh, so uh, Narendra, I'm just going to come to you next. I think, you know, we've heard um, a lot of good points and, you know, I don't think we can necessarily address all of them because I think what between Saurabh and, and Rajesh, they've raised uh, questions about the readiness of the ecosystem, about the fact that is there actually a lower TCO, is the uh, infrastructure and the fiber ready? I think these are a lot of the points that uh, even Sham and, um, uh, and Ben had raised. But, you know, as one of the key uh, players uh, enabling the ecosystem, right, as one of the key partners of all of the operators and, and the rest of the, uh, and the rest of the uh, uh, players around this, what do you see as, you know, the process that one has to go through to actually realize some of these benefits? Because today we're still facing, you know, a very challenging road ahead. It's, it's not, um, uh, we've just started and we have a long way to go. So what do you see as the roadmap to take this forward? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I think it's a very nice uh, questions that has been coming up uh, from Konal. And these are very valid questions in everyone's minds, you know, who's uh, thinking about deploying a network like uh, VI and Airtel and G, of course. And it's not just in India, even outside in different countries, we developed or developing, there's a lot of traction coming on open brand standards. So coming on the maturity of the technology, because the maturity is very important to take decisions, you know, about, and the telecom networks are like now 24 by 7 kind of networks. If technology is not mature, nobody is going to invest in that and take the risk of trying something new. And I am glad to announce that uh, Mavenier has already implemented few networks. Number one is Dish Network in US, which is 5G SE network where we have deployed 3,000 plus sites as of yesterday. And now we are deploying 200 plus sites every day going forward. So that shows the confidence that operator has put in into this technology because it has matured and it is going to take challenge of, you know, whatever expectation operators have from the vendors who are working on creating this ecosystem. So technology is not about just my venue, it's about the partnership, it's about the collaboration between multiple vendors. We have deployed our RAN system on hardware which is coming from vendor A, the cloud infrastructure coming from vendor B, software is my venue, transport is coming from somebody else, core is from different vendor. 
So there are more than dozens of vendors, you know, working on the network, and everything has been aligned so properly and tested that there is no difference between a traditional and open end vendor as perceived by the end customer. Because end of the day, who is paying for these services? That is what is very important, you know. Capex, opex reduction is the highest priority. Like uh, Mr. Ars told, that TCO has to be low. And to achieve those kind of TCO, we need a critical mass. There has to be sufficient volumes generated on these vendors who are working hard to create an ecosystem. Their companies now, because of open end standards, they can dream of creating a radio unit. You know, are you? that nobody thought in India that can be developed in a traditional world of RAN. Nobody thought of creating any other product, you know, that goes, for example, DU or CU, DU hardware, CU software, software. But now, when I interact with uh, different vendors within India, even outside, I see that people are taking up this challenge, you know, people are coming up with low-cost hardware for DU. They are coming up with creative ideas how we can improve the software efficiency to deploy it on a minimum number of cores so that you use your computing resources very efficiently because that all adds to the reduction in GCO. And I'm very thankful to our operator friends because they are pushing us really hard to achieve the objectives of reduction in the TCO and as well as improving the end customer experience. So when we talk about network deployment, I think CapEx, OpEx, we have talked about open RAN will definitely add to that as long as we are able to achieve a faster deployment within India and outside. The role of system integrator that uh, I think someone told about, that is very important here. And thankfully in India we have a lot of resources, skill sets with cloud mindset. We have a very big software industry where we have resources who can work on this challenge of taking system integration of cloud data network. So, if you have a software coming from company X, cloud provider is Y, radio coming from somebody else, somebody has to put all these things together. Earlier in the traditional domain, you know, operator has this mindset and, and it was right mindset that, you know, I am buying from vendor A, let him do all the services and even if they are satisfied or not satisfied, you know, they did not have much choice because the technology was very, uh, I mean, it was not open, you know, it was not shared. Interfaces were not open, even the processes were not open. So people like, I have an experience of hiring engineers. Somebody is, do you have Ericsson experience? Yes, you can come because I am using Ericsson equipment. Now those things are not going to happen when you deploy open RAN, you know. Interfaces are open. You will have resources who have experience of working on these open interfaces. They will experience of integrating these complex piece of puzzles that Shyam was talking about. If interfaces are defined properly and implemented clearly, I believe it is going to be a plug and play kind of thing. Just like a Wi-Fi router, you know, you buy a router, you come to your home, you install, give a power connection, put the IP address and everything happens automatically. So we have a vision of achieving those kind of plug and play in the domain of open RAN deployment. And I'm sure that's not very far. That is the comfort once it comes to the operators, whether it's in India or outside, I'm sure this technology will take much faster to capture the market. And in fact, it will force those traditional vendors to open up their interfaces as well. And that way we will achieve the, the real vision of a standard open interface based network applied, which meets the requirement of operators as well as the end consumers. When we talk about end customers, I think the experience of the network is very important. In today's discussion, Shyam put a very small note about radio optimization. And I think RS also mentioned about RIC. I think these, these things are very important because the intelligence that is required to optimize the network is already there. But unfortunately, in the traditional vendor domain, that information is not exposed to the outside world. So there is a always tie, you know, like if Airtel or Vodafone wants to optimize the network, they have to depend on the capability of that particular vendor. Or they have to source a customized solution, maybe based on some probes, and then run the algorithms to optimize the network through automation. Luckily, in open RAN standards, you know, we have something called RIC, 
trained intelligence controller that collects the information that is coming from various users of the network. You have a lot of reports, you know, like uh, there's uh, counters, there is messaging that talks about how user is you know, like uh, experience the network in terms of quality, in terms of signal strength. And all that information can be gathered, collected inside the RIC. And then RIC will run various algorithms, you know, very powerful algorithms that goes into like 75 dimensional matrix. You can use Bayesian optimization to collect and analyze this data and come up with a recommendation that can be automatically applied in the network. So all this automation that comes through RIC and the intelligence that can be utilized through RIC will enable radio optimization much faster, much more easier and help users to experience much better than what they are experiencing right now. And it will also reduce the cost of optimization that nowadays operator has to put. We still follow a lot of conventional mechanisms still like I still know there are a lot of drive testing happening in the network. People are optimizing manually. But once OpenRAN gets deployed, RIC interfaces are exposed to third party applications which are called RFs in the domain of OpenRAN standards. Many software companies who are working on AIML, they can develop application to analyze this data and optimize the network. So that way they will contribute to the experience of the end user because that is what is more important and that is what ultimately pays for all these things to operators as well as to the vendors. So if we keep that into mind, I think OpenRAN gives a very good opportunity, not just to reduce the TCO, but also to enhance the user experience that will be there on the OpenRAN network. Great, great. Th thank you so much, uh, uh, Narendraji. I appreciate the comments. I think you have tried to cover so many of the points that were, that were raised. Um, why don't we go over to Paul online. So, so Paul, I think, you know, with your guys' focus specifically on the edge um, and specifically on how the edge can really be uh, leveraged for this, uh, how do you see the developments in OpenRAN enhancing, say, the customer experience or enhancing what telcos can do given the new opportunities or the new possibilities that open up on software or on computing or some of the, you know, things with that we've been hearing from the other, uh, the other speakers earlier. Thanks, Kanal, and uh, good morning to everyone there. It's a privilege and honor to be with you today. Uh, the company I work for, Wind River, has really been honored to become a, a new entrant into the ecosystem that Open RAN has created that everyone's been discussing this morning. Uh, we have had, uh, for some time, made investments in open source and created a new open source initiative uh, in the Open Infrastructure Foundation, which is where the um, where the OpenStack technology was originally started. And that, that open source initiative is called Starling X. And the reason why we founded that with partners such as Intel is the need for a geo-distributed, disaggregated cloud technology that could support the unique footprint requirements and latency and, and optimization requirements uh, of a 5G VRAN. Uh, the work that we've done there has also uh, really been introduced to ORAN in Workgroup 6, where we lead there for the OCloud infrastructure development uh, and really participate in the overall ecosystem as we bring together partners such as our friends here from Mavenir in network deployments globally. Uh, that effort has fortunately paid off in uh, significant deployments at Verizon in the U.S., as well as the world's first open RAN deployment uh, with Vodafone in the U.K., and uh, Canal, to answer your question, I think we see some tremendous opportunities here. While uh, certainly this technology is going to dramatically reduce TCO, we see already TCO benefits approaching 30% uh, with, with this uh, new technology approach, enabled by extremely efficient infrastructure, single core consumption at the edge, single pane of glass management. As the session has discussed today, uh, analytics and AI, AI ops automation, orchestration, these are all key capabilities. Uh, but as we look forward, the, the real exciting future is going to bring new applications to this infrastructure. ORAN really creates the first business case that creates a justification for cloudifying the entire network from the core to the edge. And as the edge of the network becomes cloudified, this creates a new platform for service agility that whether you consider it to be private 5G or OT-based applications for autonomous vehicles and manufacturing and, and and such things, there's tremendous opportunities for new revenue creation on the same platform that's being used to build and deploy over in 5G in networks today. So that's where we see a lot of the, the excitement of the future, but obviously today the technology is focused on initial deployment of ORAN 
and 5G and networks to create that foundation upon which in the future we'll build those new services. Great. No, th thank you so much, Paul. So, um, you know, I think we'll, uh, you know, Ben, you had raised a whole number of points, and I think Red Hat is uh, not new to trying to get multiple partners in the ecosystem to work together in a secure platform in really being able to scale it. I think a lot of what we've heard, even what Sham raised earlier about, you know, who's going to be responsible for stitching all this together, and Narendra also mentioned the same thing about creating multiple uh, vendors coming together, and I think we heard the same from, uh, uh, from Paul as well. So, um, you know, how do you see the comp you know, like the, the complexity of the fact that there now have to be multiple guys who are coming together onto a common platform who have to execute in real time all the time, right? It's not just an app, it's an actual network which is running out there. Uh, you know, if an app goes down, yeah, people complain, but if your network goes down, then, you know, it, it's more than complaints and Rajesh, will, his phone will be ringing off the hook. Uh, so what, what's your view on how you see the complexity of this coming together? Look, I think the complexity, um, you know, should not be dismissed, right? It's a, a complex thing that as an industry, we need to take time to work together on. I think the, the vision from the operators is going to drive what the industry is going to bring to those operators, right? So I think a very clear path and a clear strategy for the solution and being able to articulate that to the partners, to bring the partners together, like together in one room, right? To buy into the vision, to understand that the work that those partners are undertaking is not something short term. They're going to be partners for the next five to seven years. You know, we are building a network that is going to provide in places lifeline solutions for customers. So I think the complexity is very large. What I hear in talking to operators um, in this region and across the world is, you know, the GSI becomes very important, right? So I think that shift, the paradigm shift now becomes as we bring multiple vendors together, as they all buy into the strategy and the vision of the operator, the operator is going to now rely more on the GSI, right? We heard that from Sham as well earlier on today. And I think, you know, that's an opportunity for the GSIs to step up in a way they haven't before they now have an opportunity to deliver an end-to-end -end solution that is going to service internal workloads, but I think the exciting part adjacent to that is those industry 4.0 workloads. And they're going to be really specific in terms of industries, whether it's healthcare, transport, financial services, or retail. The GSIs are going to be able to tap into that industry knowledge that they have, that speciality that they bring. So I think they have the opportunity to bring more to the table for the operator's benefit to help drive some of those new net, net new revenue streams. So for me, you know, I think it's not only the partners to deliver, you know, ORAN or a 5G network, it's the partners that are also going to deliver those net new revenue streams. And I think there's an intersection in those partners, especially around the GSIs. And you know, that's where we have an open partner ecosystem at Red Hat. You know, it's how we build our company over the last quarter century um, in terms of our technology being open. You know, we want to enable flexibility in choice when it comes to partners. And I think that becomes even more valuable and critical as we move into those industry 4.0 workloads. You know, I like to think that there's no killer single application when it comes to 5G and Edge it's going to be specific industry applications. So those partnerships are going to be really critical. Great, great. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, uh, so Rajesh, we've got a few minutes left, and I think we'll try and do one more round of questions. But um, what do you see as the single most, if you can identify it potentially, what's the single most um, uh, you know, a, a critical turning point in the evolution of this entire platform that will you know, enable you guys to adopt it at scale? Right now, it's just experiments, it's trials. Where do we uh, sort of just, you know, uh, turn the edge on that curve where this now starts becoming more mainstream? I think uh, the turning point will be how we quickly we introduce in the brownfield as well, because we see uh, the greenfield, like Narendra was talking about, some dish and Rakuten, we also see. At the same time, we, unless it will be really able to enter in the brownfield networks, which is as you talked about earlier, the NSA, that will be the key turning point. 
So then you will get the scale and the scale of economics is the must to really adopt because as we all, we are on the same page actually. Uh, we are talking about the right technology, good innovations, lot of opportunities and a lot of maybe new services also and consumer will get finally get benefited. But unless and until it fit in because you have very stunted classical uh, RAN networks which is delivering the right uh, demands currently from uh, services in the market. So you have to displace that as well. It's not that only the experiment and greenfield networks, it has to become in the brownfield and then it's, you can achieve the scale and then we can yes. offer all the benefits. I think that's no, no, the key. Very good, very good point, absolutely. Um, uh, Saurabh, uh, you know, what about you? Is it, is it the development of your in-house radio? Uh, is it um, the overall, you know, say integration to 4G and being able to ramp up? What do you see as the critical turning point? I think let me add to what uh, uh, Rajesh said on that front, right? I mean, uh, at Airtel, for example, I mean, our North Star is uh, customer experience and the cost to sell, right? I think these are the two metrics which are, I mean, crucial for uh, making any progress decision points uh, on the open brand journey. I think that's one part. The second part is if you look at the open RAN to me is at the first phase of maturity. I mean, honestly speaking, if you open the open RAN, it's not that open, right? I mean, I mean uh, you change some component, uh, you have to do a lot of testing validation, right? I think that's where, uh, I mean, we have to reach that level of maturity where I think what Narendra mentioned about plug and play, I mean, the true plug and play can come into picture. Uh, we have to do, I mean, huge lot of automation, right, to make that happen. We have to have far more opening up of the APIs, I mean, all, all the standards uh, put together because there are still some things which are evolving. Uh, so I would say that, I mean, so these are very important points uh, which actually have to be resolved, right? I mean, and, and last but not the least, I mean, I would uh, repeat what, I mean, Sham mentioned in the morning, right? I mean, the whole of, it has to be lower the, or more than the, I mean, sum of parts, right? I mean, that's, I think, would be a real key. And however, having said that, I think we, we are saying that this is a long journey, right? And, and we have to do this together, right? I mean, it's not, uh, I mean, something that operator can just complain about. Uh, and we are willing to, I mean, make that journey, right? But then, I think the key technology partners, right, I mean, I mean, whether it is on the, I mean, hardware suppliers, whether it is on the software suppliers, whether it is on the cloud natives, I think that has to come together. And there's one more important point I think I just wanted to highlight. I mean, sometimes it is really overlooked, uh, which is about competencies. It is not intersection of competencies, it is the union of the competencies which is coming around, right? I mean, just to illustrate, I mean, you'll find a very rarely a radio guy who knows anything about ABCD about cloud. You would find really a cloud guy who can talk about radio optimization. You would really find a, I mean, a, a, a transport guy who is able to, I mean, really give a real clarity of what is happening on the network, right? So I think it is, the other important aspect is this union of competencies, right? Is, I, I think just, just to highlight that it's a huge task in front of the industry. I think if we have to make open RAN a success, I think this is something which also has to be really worked upon, right? So to me, I mean, if we are able to solve these problems, then we will have the solution to those two metrics that I talked about, which is customer experience and the cost to serve, right? I think that will really, I mean, ensure that we are at the tipping point of the open RAN journey per se. Thank you. Great, great. Thanks, Arb. So, uh, so Paul, I mean, you guys have done deployments. You've done it globally. You've got, um, you know, uh, solutions and networks in production. Uh, when do you see it happening in India? What do you see as the trigger for making what you guys are doing around the rest of the world happen here uh, domestically? Sorry, you're on mute. Apologies there. Uh, yeah. We certainly see as you go through the end of 2022 and, and, the, and the spectrum auctions that are happening shortly here uh, is into 2023 is very possible. Uh, there's a lot of work that's been done in these production deployments to bring all of these companies together in this diverse ecosystem of vendors that provide the complete ORAN solution. And now we're at the point where 
a lot of that work has been hardened and proven in actual production deployment. Uh, we've learned a lot from that, in fact. It's beyond just a technology platform to support these applications, such as CU and DU and, and distributed edge sites. It's also about the operational tools. Uh, some of the forum has talked about today the need for analytics, AI, and ML for day two operations to be able to monitor such a, a huge distributed system. In some of our networks with tens of thousands of uh, VRAN and ORAN nodes deployed, uh, running actual live production traffic, uh, we found that automation and orchestration, single pane of glass, as well as capabilities to shrink down to a single node but still have a converged control plane across that network are really critical capabilities to en enable the operator to run this system on a day-to-day -day basis. And then, of course, capping that all off, you really need to have experienced personnel that understand the, the requirements for deployment and operations of these types of highly disaggregated and diverse systems that frankly, as, as have been mentioned, are very complex, right? And so bringing pre-integrated solutions that are hardened into the market is really gonna help India deploy these, you know, in six to 12 months, instead of the, the typical 18 to 24 that we used to see with initial technologies when they were first brought to market. Great, great, thank you, Paul. And, and uh, I think, you know, we'll, we'll wrap up with Narendra, I'll give you the final word. Um, you know, when do we see, uh, you know, maybe tens of thousands of uh, radios, base stations uh, on open RAN in India for 5G happening uh, as per you? So tens of thousands are still happening outside India. And in India, I, I don't see that uh, it is not going to happen soon. And right now, we are at the right time. Open standards have evolved. They have come to such a maturity level that uh, now operators can take a decision, you know, about 5G investments. I think they should not do the same mistake that they have been doing in the past, like selecting a traditional vendor and get logged into them on every kind of support. 5G auctions are starting, investments are going to come, and that is the best time for them to take a decision about supporting open standards-based uh, solutions, because that's the only way they can minimize the long-term TCO as well as get the benefit of innovation, cloudification, automation, orchestration. And it's not just for India, you know, if all these ecosystem gets developed here, then India can become a source of supplying products and services outside India as well. So that way, if we don't do it in our own country, you know, we cannot think of doing outside India. So I think timing is perfect. 5G investments are going to start. It's the right time to take the right decision, and I think vendors are ready, especially the Mavenier, we are ready, you know, to support all the operators. The major challenge that everybody has in terms of, you know, looking at a new technology is that, is it right, is it going to work or not work? All those doubts have been cleared. I think once we have, uh, like, operators create an ecosystem for testing all the partners' solutions, if testing is done properly, then deployment and rolling out then will not take time. As I told earlier, we are doing 200 sites a day in DISH. Why can't we do it in India? We can do it here as well. So it's the opportunity if that's provided at the right time, I think we can do that. And I'm sure in 2023, we will definitely have more than 10,000 sites in India. That's the vision we have. And with the support of our friends in Airtel, Vodafone, Geo, I think there will be much more than 10,000. Great, great, that's fantastic. So that means we're only six or seven months away from seeing this hit the ground. So uh, thank you everyone, um, really appreciate it. Thank you Rajesh, thank you Saurabh, uh, thank you Paul online, uh, Ben of course for uh, the you know, presentation that you had earlier and, and finally Narendra as well. And uh, Shashiji, over to you, thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed for that interactive panel discussion session that we had and we're extremely sorry we couldn't spare enough time for the question and answers with the audience or do we have no so we'll and back. and ladies and gentlemen on that note i would now like to invite mr shashi dharan managing director bharat exhibitions to kindly propose the vote of thanks over to you sir so we'll do that after that ah uh, dada
So first of all, once again, congratulations to the entire telecom fraternity. As the vendors are ready, the operators are ready, let's do some business after two years. Now we lost a lot of business, we lost a lot of things, but good that Prime Minister has agreed and the cabinet has approved for the 5G auction. So let's do some business and uh, prepare for the next 5G event which we are doing on 7th and 8th of September. In, in the same hotel, we will be doing it. So I would like to thank the Secretary Department of Telecom. He has taken out the time from his busy schedule to join us. Uh, he's supposed to come, but in the meeting, he got on a in-between, but still, he was very keen on this subject, so he was live talking to us and briefing us how the open run. I'd like to thank all the speakers, uh, Shah Madikar, Rajesh, Ben Panic, Narendra Rawat, Saurabh Mittal, Paul Miller, and uh, special thanks to Rajat, who is our knowledge partner from BIF. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Without you, this event will not go to the, you know, to the second layer. So thank you very much, all of you, to joining. And uh, now I request uh, uh, all of you to join the uh, for a tea and a small tea break, and we'll join you back. Before that, I'd like to present a momento to all the speakers on behalf of Bharat Exhibitions. BIF and TSIDCI, who is our knowledge partners on this event. Thank you, sir. We begin by presenting to Mr. Kunal Bajaj, CEO and co-founder, Cloud Excel, who was also our excellent moderator for the panel discussion session. We present to Mr. Rajesh Singh, Executive Vice President, Vodafone Idea. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for being here with us today. To Mr. Ben Panic, Vice President, Telco Media and Entertainment, Red Hat, APAC. Thanks once again, sir, for that wonderful keynote address. To Mr. Narendra Rawat, Vice President, Technology, India and South Asia Region, Mebanil. Thank you once again, sir. To Mr. Saurabh Mittal, Head Network, Infra Products R&D Bharti Airtel. Thanks a lot to you, sir. And to Mr. Rajat Mukherjee, Director General Broadband India Forum. Thank you, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, I would like to introduce one book which is going to be inaugurated of this month on 27th at India International Center at 10.30. The book is titled Battles of Telecom by Sri A.K. Bhargwaji. Some of you know A.K. Bhargwaji, otherwise I will tell you A.K. Bhargwaji used to be the executive director of MTNL, then moved to DOT and then to TDSAT member. He is here with us today. So this is going to be on... 27th and Bhargwaji, I'll request you to, to let the people see who wrote this book. This is A.K. Bhargwaji. Okay. So this book will be launched on 27th at 10.30 a.m. at India International Center. Thank you. Can I present this book to Ben Panic? Because he came all the way from outside before you say, I request you to present to him. Rest of the people, we can still send it. Thank you very much indeed. You. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I now invite all of you to kindly join us for refreshments and tea served outside. And I would also request all our delegates and guests to kindly spare a few minutes during the tea and lunch break to visit the exhibition stalls. And the tea break is for 15 minutes, requesting everybody to be back in time and seated for the next session. Thank you.